Okay, today we're going to start chapter 8, and it's going to be on a two-sample z-test. So the good thing is that it's similar to what you learn in chapter 7. Okay, but before I go into the t-test, let me just go over a few definitions. So the first one you need to know is an independent sample. An independent sample is what we're going to learn in today's lesson. And that's when you compare one group of people or things to another group. And one of the groups is not related at all to the other. So it's two independent samples, two independent populations. And then the other one is dependent samples. And that's where they are related or sometimes it's the same people or you put people in pairs. So this one's in pairs and you compare one person to the other. This one's not in pairs, not related, and you compare one group in general to the other. Okay, so let's look at a few examples in your book. Let's say you want to compare the resting heart rate of three people before they drink coffee and then the heart rate of the same people after they drink coffee. Okay, so the key here is that it's the same individuals, so you're comparing um, their heart rate to their own heart rate. So it's comparing one person to another, so that would be a dependent sample. Okay, the next one is you compare the test score for 35 STAT students to the test scores for 42 biology students. Okay, so it's different students. The ones that study bio do not study STATs. Okay, so they're not related at all and you're comparing the scores of one group to the other. Not the students individually, just overall. So that would be an example of independent samples. Okay, so let's look at, at another example. Uh, you want to compare the heights of 27 females to 27 males. So think about it. Would it be dependent or independent? Is it the same group or is it two different groups that are not related? Okay, so it's two different groups that are not related, so it would be independent samples. And then the last one, you're comparing the midterm score of 14 chemistry students on, with the score on the final of the same students. So again, the keyword is the same, so it would be dependent because you're comparing one person to the other, their own score for the midterm and the final. So I'll send you a copy of these notes. Okay, now that you know that um, for the next two sections, we're going to be working with independent samples where one is not related to the other. And you're going to write your hypotheses like this. So it's either going to be this one, this one, or this one. The one that you choose will depend on the wording of the question. So things like different, change, you'll choose this one, greater, increase, higher, it will be this one, and then um, decrease, lower, less. So you just have to check which one you put on the left and which one you put on the right. This one would be mu1 is greater than mu2, and this is mu1 less than mu2. And then the formula is this. So you don't have to memorize it, just understand how to use it. Okay, so let's look at an example in your textbook. Okay, let's say that we're interested in knowing who spends more um, on their credit card, who has a higher balance on their credit card, males or females. Okay, so what they did is they gave you a copy of the results. So they did a survey. They asked 200 people, how much do you owe on your credit card? Okay, uh, these are the numbers for females. These are the numbers for males. So we can see that for males, it's a little harder, a little higher. Um, okay, so here it says, is there a difference in the mean credit card debt of males and females? The keyword is difference. Okay, so when you look at your options from these three, the one that represents difference would be the not equals. So there's no difference, there is a difference. If it would say, do females have a higher amount of debt, then you would use this one. 
if it was saying do females have a lower amount of debt so this is like lower less higher more and this is just different okay so here are the results you might want to look at your notes for 7.1 because a lot of the things are going to be similar so it tells us to use the significance level of 0.05 okay so first you want to write down the hypothesis so it's going to be mu1 equals mu2 for the null and then not equals so this means there is no difference between what females and males owe this would be there is a difference between what females and males owe. and then if you look at your book the number one represents females and the number two represents males okay so this is females and this is males our significance level is 0.05 and it's going to be very similar to the last chapter. So from there, you write down your formula, except that this time the formula is a little different. It's a little bit longer. And then all the values are given to you. They're all right here. S is a standard deviation, and sigma is a standard deviation. So sometimes they give you S and sometimes sigma. They're both standard deviations, so just use whichever one they give you. So you get the values from page 442, all of these and then you put them in the formula use the calculator like Desmos so that you can find what Z is so if you put this in Desmos you're gonna get Z equals negative 1.03 okay, then you draw the curve okay so just to remind you we're gonna be using rejection region you can use p-value whichever one would work for this but if I use rejection region okay, alpha is 0.05 so you have to check what type of test is this. Is it one tail or two tails? And again, if you forget, you can use your notes from 7.1. But this would be a two tail test. So you have to divide 0.05 by two. So if you divide by two, you get 0 0.025. And then to find the rejection region, you're gonna go to your Z table and you're gonna look up 0 0.025. Okay, so it is right here. And if you look at the z-score, it's negative 1.96. Okay, so you're gonna shade because it's a two-tail test on the left and on the right. Okay, so the shaded part is a rejection region. Negative 1.96. And for z, we got negative 1.03. That goes here. If it falls inside the shaded part, we reject the null. If it falls in the part that's not shaded, you fail to reject. So in this case, we fail to reject because it's in the part that's not shaded. And then your conclusion would be the same. There's not enough evidence to reject the null. So we can reject the null, so we conclude that there is no difference in the credit card debt of males and females. And that's because we weren't able to reject the null. Okay, so what I would want you to do next is try an example on your own. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the answer key so that you can check if you got the right answer. 